We are about to cross an ocean and we'll be crossing it with a carrot plugging an open through hole in our sailboat. Carrot. There's no way around the Gulf of Carpentaria in our circumnavigation of Australia. It's the large and shallow sea that is separating us from Australia's Northern Territory. This 300 nautical mile crossing will be the largest offshore sail we've undergone in the three years we've been cruising on our 10 meter sailboat, Nakama. 1980 something, 34 feet worth of sick radness. She may be small, but she packs a punch and we feel regardless of the carrot, she'll get us across this body of water safely. We're well and truly committed. There's only one way and that's forward. It was a soggy existence. Hello. It's a day like today that makes you feel like you could just keep going and going and going. Oh. Definitely on, whatever it is. Last day, eh? Last day. <laughs> Finally put a lure out. But we are getting there, folks. We are getting there. <laughs> what are you doing? So, gluing that sink faucet together. Not only did we have toilet problems right before we planned to make this ocean crossing. Oh, I can already smell it. Ooh. Maybe not put toilet. Oh my god. Oh, come on, he's done it. Woo! No bucket for us. But one of our sink drain connections has also broken. I don't know what this part's called, but it's the piece that goes through your sink and into the plumbing below. This means we have a completely open drain to the seawater. We've got two sinks, it wouldn't be a big issue, but we're expecting when we're sailing across the Gulf to be on a hill and basically on a lean, it then can put this below waterline and we would have water coming in and like sort of flooding the boat through the sink. So we've got to get it fixed before we go. Um, Being in the Torres Strait, the likelihood of finding a new one to fit our sink was very slim. However, we did find some mighty strong super glue to at least do a temporary fix. All right, don't rush boat jobs, they'll make a fool out of you. However, that was wishful thinking, which brings us to this point. Gluing that sink faucet together, uh, we tried it again last night. And then when Soph was trying to push it into the pipe, the pressure at the top broke the glue seal again. So it was kind of, we gave up. So now what I've done, which is even, it's more in, in what did you call it? Ingenuitive. And, mm. and ingenuity. In, anyway, it's more, it's slightly more out there, but we've got heaps of fresh food at the moment. So thought we could spare half a carrot. So I've snapped the top end of a carrot off and I could get that into where the pipe goes. Carrot. And then I've just, wedge that in with a little bit so I can retrieve it later. <laughs> like, the thing is, it's gonna go rotten every couple days out here in the heat, so it's only like a three day fix, but it'll get us across the gulf. And then I've tightened a hose clamp around the carrot. So it's like a carrot doorstop. Um, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Let's hope she works. Yeah. So with a carrot blocking the through hole, we could move on and start to get the rest of the boat ready. I've had visions of using our staysail for a while now. That's kind of like a smaller head sail that for us hangs onto our inner forestay. And with the forecast we have, it looks like it actually might come in handy. So it's a perfect excuse to set it up just in case. However, you can tell it hasn't left the depths of the boat for a while as a can of WD-40 has come in handy to free up the sea's tanks. We also ran a jack line around the whole deck of the boat. This will be our clip on point if we're to leave the cockpit. Sort of just easing into it this morning. No real rush when we're gonna be out there for three days, we didn't think. So we just thought we'd wake up, ease into it and go when we're ready. But we're getting there. We're almost, almost ready to go. Underway! The main is up. Soap's just getting a little preventer line sorted for that one before we go any further. And then we'll get some headsail out, pick our line. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. This is all so new for me. As Soph teaches me everything I know every single time, but even more so this time. While we've lost sight of land on many an occasion for many hours, and sailing through the night is something we've become accustomed to, we have never before embarked on a crossing like this together. When setting out to sail around Australia, we knew this day would come, and well, that day has finally arrived. So we've got about 340 miles in front of us. It's gonna be about three days over to Gove in the Northern Territory across the Gulf of Carpentaria. We have got fairly good conditions. Hopefully there's nothing weird out there. Um, today's probably gonna be our windiest day with 20 to 25 knots. The rest of the day is dropping down to 15 to 20. So, hopefully it's a good sail. Hopefully everything goes smoothly and swell and yeah, yeah, hopefully smoothly with lack of swell, but we'll be feeling swell. We're running closely alongside the shipping lane that's adjacent to Friday Island. We have about 15 miles of contesting with ships before we can lay our course to go, settle in and relax for the long haul. This island over here is so cool. I was not expecting it to be so nice. It's called Booby Island, probably because it has a lot of booby birds. Nothing inappropriate. That's just a guess. <laughs> Booby Island was in fact named Booby Island after the seabirds known as boobies. Another cool thing about Booby Island is that one of our patrons was a lighthouse keeper there and they've informed us a cool piece of history. Booby Island hosts one of Australia's earliest post offices, officially established in 1835. However, passing ships had been already stashing letters of communication in a cave on the island for many years prior. We love a good bit of the old sailing history, so cheers to our patron community for sharing some further insights that we may have missed along the way. We've just decided to drop the stay sail because not as much wind as we thought. I think it's also eased a little bit. still just vaguely see the Torres Strait but we are getting offshore now and we are walking along we're doing like eight to nine knots the wind has definitely gotten up a little bit so we're happy we're chilling both reading and yeah truly eased just now eight and a half knots it's definitely not the 25 knots we expected anyway it could just be a little low we're just gonna chill for a bit I mean we're doing four we were doing at one stage today we we're sitting on nine knots now we're doing four knots what do you think everyone should do 
do right now. Everyone's different. <laughs> yeah, <it's the> <laughs> do whatever you please. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Apart from if we tell you to subscribe. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, that's right. You should definitely subscribe. Sorry, I will tell you what to do. And some of you should definitely do Patreon. sort of came back in and now it is dropped off again and we are sitting on about four and a half knots it's crazy we haven't had such a lack of wind for a really long time I don't know whether it's gonna stay like this whether we're gonna get smashed tonight who knows anyway I'm gonna start cooking some dinner because I think we're both kind of we'd be happy to start doing some watches because we're tired so I'm gonna make some nachos sounds exciting doesn't it you came for nachos so okay Yes. Good job. Recently, we had someone ask us, why do you do it? We have a lot of time to think out here. It's one of my favorite things I like about sailing. <laughs> For someone with a busy mind, which I have a very busy mind, it gives you a chance to just think random thoughts and think them through and explore them. I think that's one of the things I like most about out here. But the other thing is in when, when you are nervous and when you are fearful, I think what I like so much about that is that you are at the mercy of something far bigger than yourself and I think that's maybe one of the things I like most about it, sailing that is. And I was just thinking about that now while I was out here and I thought I'd share one of the many, 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 many thoughts I have out here with you guys. Sharing a brainwave with you there. One of the things I like most about sailing, the sun's setting, Soph's cooking nachos, it's really cool. Yeah, so. Hi. Nice placement. <sighs> it's a workout, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to cook dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good? I mean, yeah. Can't, really... Can't complain about night first. Especially in a bowl. I'm gonna try and get some sleep and we will see you either tonight or in the morning. Good night. Yes? We had our first little school, came with about two hours of anticipation, a very quick dinner, and then it only lasted all of 10 minutes, but hopefully that got it out of its system and we can cruise along like this at five and a half knots or whatever. We don't have too much sail up in case something comes along again. Always, what are you, play it safe at night, eh? It's all about comfort. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up and Start my book and let you get to sleep. We don't have night vision lenses, but you'll just have to take our word for it that we were in for a pretty wild night. The good thing is we made a lot of ground, surfing along at nine knots. Good morning. What a night. What a night. It was a wild one. The signs of day are beginning to show and I'm up, signs down. The seas picked up to a state that we were grateful we couldn't see too well. And while we felt a bit uneasy at times, Nakama was having the time of her life. I was in awe of the way she held her line, balanced through the chop and waves, and rocketed us through the ocean on that dark and windy night. The only thing we had going wrong for us was a wave slapped the side of the boat and I don't know how but all of our instruments decided to switch themselves on. That was only the one drama, we got that all going and everything seemed to be going fine at the moment but I just was not too sure why a wave on the side of the boat would have made all of our instruments turn off. We've made over a hundred miles offshore now. Cool, cool, cool. 
slip. Oh, I slept with that time, yeah. Oh, well, not. Did you tell her that one happened? Yeah. We need to run the engine. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Should Water. we? I might just do that now. So it comes a time in the morning where the nachos wear off and you get so hungry. So hungry. And I'm making eggs. I don't know what Soph told you about last night, but it's always hectic at night. Now it's chilling out this morning. The ocean's becoming nice and flat again. Like, not flat, but really pleasant in, in, in comparison. Man, and we were getting soaked last night. The waves were clipping the back edge and spraying up into the cockpit. It was, it was a soggy existence. Blissing out, eating these eggs, it's everything you need, like, it's like warm and salty and we haven't eaten since like 6 o'clock last night, which doesn't sound like that hectic of a thing, but when you've been like awake through most of it, it's like kind of a long time. So we've come about 160 miles, we've got about 170 or so odd miles to go. We're all like sitting about halfway across the Gulf, it looks like. So we're well and truly committed to going to the other side. There's only one way and that's forward. It's kind of cool seeing the little boat icon on the charts halfway between the Gulf. Yeah, it is cool. Eh? That's, that's my favorite part about it so far. So if wants us to start fishing, I think we might have to do that after lunch because I can't murder when I'm tired. Yeah. The day evolved to be pleasant. It feels really special out here today. It's a day like today that makes you feel like you could just keep going and going and going. You just get into a really nice little rhythm out here. It's good. The lingering gray clouds cleared and we were left with blue sky, sunshine, and the perfect amount of wind to keep up the pace. We are kind of cruising along at one of the slower paces now, sitting on like five and a half knots, but We've been sitting at a really great speed all day, sitting on about six knots. The rest of the day consisted of catching up on sleep, rigging up the trawling rod, but being too tired to actually put it in the water. I think I was still feeling like such a zombie that I couldn't think of anything worse really in my head than landing a fish at that time and having to just deal with that in a small cockpit. Reading books, which is a first in like four years. That's the beauty of being out here, slowing down enough to actually pick up a book. And before we knew it, it was time to start cooking dinner for our second evening out on the ocean. Sun's starting to set on day two. So I'm just making up some chronic migraine. Anyway, very pleasant at this stage. Pretty chuffed. Thank you, baby. It's all right. sunset we are tonight.
one of those nights. Nakama glided along with a gentle 10 to 15 knots breeze. The sky was completely clear and the stars glistened. Most importantly, we slept so good. It is sunrise on day three. Last night was just like magical. The sun is actually about to pop its head over the horizon any second. So I'll try and capture that for you guys. Anyway, day three, eh? Almost there. We're under 100 miles, actually. I think that happened on Surf. Surf's last watch, we hit the mythical under 100 miles. So we're ticking it back. We're back into double digits now. I think we got somewhere in 70 miles to go. Morning. And that is the first time we've taken the reef out since we left Cairns. It's such a beautiful morning this morning, probably like the lightest wind we've had for a really long time. And it doesn't look like there's any signs of it increasing. So take it out. A new little sail combo with the stay sail as well as a head sail. It's kind of weird because like the stay sail is such I feel like a very vintage shape <laughs> compared to the head sail so it's like they don't really have the same shape to them I don't know whether that affects it I'm not too sure but I mean we seem to be doing all right so As you may or may not have noticed, we have some new looking shots in this week's episode. That is a massive, 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 humongous thank you to our patrons. For those that do support and just for those that watch along, thanks guys. You make this thing possible and um, we'll do our best to continue scraping on by and making these videos for you guys. Can't believe we're going to see the land again tonight. Pretty sick. First time ever we've had three sails up there looking mint and we are sailing along in bugger all breeze about eight knots right now and we're still managing to keep just up under five knots this season for sailing has just built the confidence so much so it's fun to start getting a bit more experimental so i've seen the galley making up some brekkie burritos at the moment which i'm pretty psyched for oh, get <laughs> oh my god it's definitely on whatever it is it is definitely on last day eh Last day. <laughs> Finally put a lure out. I'm not gonna get rid of this. I just want to keep going. If every day was this good out on the big blue, sign me up. I just want to keep going. <laughs> like it just feels so good out here at the moment when you've just got a beautiful, beautiful 15 knot breeze and blue skies and relatively calm seas. It is just like we are just gliding along. It's so good. Catching tuna, making Mexican brekkie burritos. Reading happened. books, I haven't read a book or even been close to completing a book. That wasn't a textbook. For almost 
four years, I would say. Literally last time I was out sailing, like proper sailing on the big blue. It's like the only time I really get to read is out here. So it's just good. It's nice to be back, back to basics, I suppose. <laughs> hey, Chill. Have you settled into life on the big blue too? Look at that cat. Look at that cat. What a specimen, hey. We don't have to make it to tin tuna because it's actually a decent one. We've had pretty bad luck with always getting little mac tuna and stuff like that, so absolutely frothing on this fish right now. knots just forward of the beam. Knackers is just eating into it. Loving it. I'm stoked we put that reef in though, as you always are whenever you do put them in. But yeah, pretty, pretty comfy with 20 knots just forward of the beam. the home stretch all day and after dropping below 100 nautical miles it feels like we're just about to rock up but in actual fact we still have quite a lot of sailing to go we can see land <laughs> it's a tiny tiny little speckle in the distance but we are getting there folks we are getting there can't see the challenge any thought that leaves my mind Guess my arm sees the dead Oh, he's talking! Oh, he's talking! Oh, he's talking! Oh, he's talking! Good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> 
We are slowly creeping into the lee of Brema Island, which is knocking some of this swell off, which is nice. But our journey across the gulf isn't going to end easily. Fifteen minutes until it goes down, then I reckon we got like 45. So maybe there'll be an ambience to the air when we drop anchor, but it'll definitely be after sunset. We were planning on anchoring at Bremer Island as it's five nautical miles closer than go. Decided to abort Bremer Island. We can't make it. The wind is ex coming from exactly where we want to go and it's blowing like 20 knots and we're motoring up into it at like one knot. It was going to take us all night to get there. So we've decided that we've got an all right angle. All right angle. We've got like the wind 40 degrees off our bow into go. So we're going to try and get up there. We're motoring with the help of these sails of ours. The sun has also just set. So we're for sure getting in in the dark. Um, a bit of a bummer, but that's alright. We'll get there eventually. The last couple of miles are honestly always, always the hardest. The slightly burdensome thing about our little uh, extended journey into Gove is it's another 10 miles. Well, okay, it's been a slow process, but I thought I'd just touch in. We've just dropped the main now as well, so we've finally turned down to follow the port markers in to the channel. Thankfully, like I was thinking we might have been doing less than a knot, but thankfully the swell has dropped off enough that we're making some ground. We're doing four and a half knots at the moment. That is mind-blowingly good. I was well and truly prepared to be doing a knot for the next seven hours in but at this stage 4.8 knots like I, we're laughing on that it's so nice to have the swell die out we've just been getting drenched up there We arrived in Gove in the Northern Territory after 60 hours of crossing the Gulf of Carpentaria the last miles were definitely the hardest as we beat into the wind down into this port. But our journey offshore will be something we will never forget. It feels really special out here today. I don't know, it's just really nice. It's been epic. It's been truly epic. The sense of achievement of completing our first crossing aboard Nakama with a carrot holding us above waterline is so huge as we cook up some tuna before we call it an evening. So we've sliced up some, the big tuna, the big tuna. It was a pretty small tuna. <laughs> I meant to say the big eye tuna. Oh. <laughs> Half of it just raw sashimi. And then I tried to pan, pan sear the rest. That's <laughs> the like, lack of vocabulary we're tired. Um, but I think I might've overcooked it. But anyway, we got some wasabi and some soy sauce. And hopefully it'll be good. And then that will finish our day off and definitely to bed after. Yeah. I reckon. Mmm. Oh wow. It just melts in your mouth. There's a roll of toilet paper in the background. Yeah, what is that doing there? <laughs> I think I was drying something and we're out of paper towel. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh. All right, catch us next week. Yoo A massive thanks to our patrons for making this production possible. As always, here's to you, because this production simply would not be possible without your support. If you've been enjoying our journey and the videography, we encourage you to please check out our patrons page. But of course, if that's not your thing, a simple like and subscribe will really put the wind in the sails of our videos getting recommended on YouTube. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed the video. See you when we're looking at you.